national security. Thank you very much, Madam President. Just to bring the temperature down and take us back to a scene, please. First of all, if I may be permitted, lest the population be misled once again by the opposition to go to that day in the House, the other place, on the 29th of April, 2020. And I'm reading from the Hansard of that day. The question asked by the other misleader, the member for Urupuch East, to the Minister of National Security, could the Honorable Minister of National Security indicate the number of exemptions granted and the reasons for permission to land in Trinidad and Tobago from the 23rd of March, 2020 to date. There was some confusion as to where that question led and what exactly was the question. I responded, thank you very much, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, the government took a very careful decision at the outset with respect to exemptions in relation to border control, put it under the Ministry of National Security for, amongst other reasons, the necessity to protect security matters. Nevertheless, the exemptions granted for persons to land in Trinidad and Tobago were the 33 nationals who returned from Barbados. This was on a basis of an agreement with the government of Barbados at that time. We've already indicated we're going to allow persons to return from Suriname. That process is being worked out now. What then happened is the member for Urupuch East then asked, Mr. Minister, could you tell us the amount of aircraft granted permission to land, including the vice president and officials of Venezuela, including the private jet last Saturday? Because you see, as is normal, what was happening is the opposition were trying to create mischief. What was happening is that the opposition were trying to create some element of doubt in the population's mind as to what was going on. The conversation at that time was there were five private jets that had flown in on a Saturday to Piaco. Who came on these jets? So, in and then what he went on to say, we want the numbers of exemptions, the reasons for permission to land, not the number of human beings, aircraft number, not human being. So one minute he was asking for the number of persons, as I was answering that, no, I want to know what are the aircraft that landed. The speaker then intervened, Madam President, well, you see, maybe the question was not done as clear as you have asked now. And Ms. Dr. Munilal said, but he can say, Madam Speaker, intervene, please. I would allow the number of aircraft as a supplemental question. And that is the question I was answering. So the Speaker then said, I would allow the number of aircraft as supplemental question. Dr. Munilal said, OK. And that is what I was answering. But Senator Ma comes here today pan-picking, cherry-picking what parts of my response he reads and doesn't put it in proper context and then has the gall to be suggesting that I am the one misleading the population. So I will tell the population, after it was agreed between the speaker and Dr. Munilal that I would answer the number of planes now, not persons, I then said, Madam Speaker, it is obvious that the author of the question did not even understand the English language because permission to land, the granting is for not for grant, the permission to land, the granting is not for granting of aircraft. Granting is for persons to be landed in Trinidad, that is individuals. Because you see, as the Minister of National Security in this COVID crisis, when our borders are closed, what I do is I grant permission for individuals to enter Trinidad and Tobago. Aircraft, cargo aircraft are coming on a daily basis. Aircraft may come to drop off people and leave. They're not allowed to disembark. So I went on to say, the granting is for persons to be landed in Trinidad that is individuals. With respect to aircraft, as the regulation stated, cargo aircraft are allowed to land in Trinidad. We, also, we have also allowed a number of commercial flights. I do not have the exact number. No one was allowed to disembark. The five private charter flights that came in over the weekend last week, Saturday, as we've already explained, was on the basis of ex expatriating. So all of the commercial flights, all of the flights that are not cargo flights that were allowed to land, save for the disembarkation of 33 nationals, save for the visit of the executive vice president of Venezuela, who immediately on completing a meeting with the honorable prime minister left, there were no other persons allowed to disembark. There was no attempt to mislead the population. I don't need to hide from the fact, as we have stated time and time again, as I just stated again, that the vice president of Venezuela, Delcy Rodriguez, came here with a delegation and this letter that they've referred to repeatedly from a permanent secretary in the Ministry of National Security, the chief immigration officer stating that the Minister of National Security has granted an exemption to a list of persons 
That is the delegation of the Vice President, Delcy Rodriguez. I didn't sit down with every single name. What I said to the public servants was, permission is going to be granted and is granted to the Vice President of Venezuela to come to Trinidad with a delegation. We have good public servants in this country. We have good immigration officers. The public servants, the permanent secretary in the Ministry of National Security is doing yeoman service. And I thank them here today for all that they're coping with in this difficult time. The permanent secretary understood what I meant when I said that the vice president is coming, her and her delegation, and grant them an exemption, and proceeded to do his work without me having to micromanage or ask him who is coming, what plane they're coming in. That conversation never took place. He went ahead as he should and issued a letter to the chief immigration officer, civil aviation, et cetera, for them to permit the vice president of Venezuela to come here. There is absolutely nothing for this government to hide. So shout high, shout low, do whatever you want. As I said a short while ago, Madam President, unfortunately for the opposition, the truth is the truth. And I have never stood anywhere in public and misled this public of Trinidad and Tobago, nor will I do so with respect to the attempt to quote a statement that was put out this afternoon by the US ambassador. I have just responded to that statement with the greatest level of respect. And I will put onto the Hansard here again that there is a good working relationship. And in my statement, I quoted what I said here not too long ago on the 13th of May in an answer to, the, to Senator Mark. Madam President, can the Honorable Minister indicate whether the government of Trinidad and Tobago is conscious of a statement issued by the United, statement, United States government concerning this country's violation of the Rio Treaty? Is the government of Trinidad and Tobago aware of the issuing of such a statement by the United States government? I answered as follows. As I have said, Madam President, we continue to have open channels of communication. In fact, last week, the United States government head, top diplomat in Trinidad and Tobago, that is the ambassador, not any underlings, may or may not, who may or may not be speaking to the media, the United States ambassador had a conversation with me as a representative of the cabinet level of the government. There were other conversations had, and this is what I said, Madam, Spe Madam President, there was no raising of the breach of any treaty. I did not see it fit to tell the public what was the conversation between the United States ambassador, who I have a great level of respect for, and myself, and what exactly he is discussing with me. I was asked whether he raised the breach of the treaty. There was no positive indication that we had breached the Rio Treaty, and I did not mislead. And I have indicated that in a statement to the public here this afternoon. I will put on the hand, sir, as I conclude. And thank you once again, Madam President, and the members of this August Chamber for the opportunity to put the truth on the Hansard. At national security in particular, we have an excellent working relationship with many arms of the United States government that is a mutually beneficial relationship as we fight, fight crime, corruption, criminality, and do other things for the benefits of the people of the United States and Trinidad and Tobago. And I will certainly not let the opposition continuing to attempt to mislead the population get into that relationship. I end, Madam President, by saying there has been no attempt by me or by the government of Trinidad and Tobago with any of these issues raised here today that have been called upon to answer to mislead the population of Trinidad and Tobago or anyone else. Thank you very much, Madam President. <laughs>